Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems, Technical Tuesday. We're going to demystify metal lined magazines. Metal lined magazines. Okay. Glock magazines have a metal liner. Have you ever seen one of these before? So if you pull that out of the magazine, you cut the plastic off, that's what you see. Okay? Uh, on top of that is a layer of plastic, right? So let's draw that really quick. The Glock magazine, the ubiquitous Glock magazine that everybody is putting in every carbine and every kind of everything has is layer of plastic on the outside and you have metal on the interior. Okay, and then you have your, your double stack that goes up and it kind of goes down to one and there you are. All right. The request that we hear sometimes is, hey, please release a metal magazine for the MRDR XR series so that you can add more capacity to those models. And the reality is that those models are at maximum capacity, as are 19s and 17s from Glock, with their current design, unless you make the, the actual grip longer. Okay, so let me explain this a little bit more and we'll talk about the construction and design of a magazine. There are four or five things, we'll find out in a second. There are four or five things that will impact the total capacity of a double stack magazine. Okay, the first one is tube width. Okay, so that's the dimension kind of from here to here. So you can imagine, of course, that a single stack magazine has less capacity than a double stack. So you want to have a double stack, you know, as many rounds as you can from side to side. So tube width is one of them. Okay, follower design has an impact. So if you have a follower that's very inefficient, uh, one good example would be the Beretta M9 follower historically was very inefficient. Um, that will consume some of your capacity. Okay. I'm going to put spring, I'm going to call it spring power. You could call it spring length or spring coils or spring wire diameter. I call it spring power because the more you are, are uh, reducing your power, the more capacity you gain. Now you could do that by changing coil size, you could do that by changing wire diameter, but really it's less power equals more capacity. We can all, we can all understand that. Um, after that is the zipper section, okay? so. We just call it the zipper here. The zipper is just when they go down to one, when the rounds go down to one column. And so this section can be de you know, designed in an efficient or an inefficient way. Uh, most magazines are about the same. You're not going to get much extra capacity there. But, but an inefficient section here where it goes down to one can impact capacity. And then the last one would be length. So obviously, the longer the magazine, the more rounds you hold, right? Okay, extended magazines hold more bullets, obviously. Okay. So again, the request is, hey, give me a metal magazine so that we can get more rounds in MRD or XR. And, and the problem is that doesn't actually work. Uh, the reason is this. If you look at all these magazines, right? If you look at, at 320s, Shields uh, magazine for the 43X48, an M&P magazine, and the interior width of a Glock liner, you'll find that everybody has kind of landed really close together. And the reason is, there's a maximum width for 9mm that you can go before the rounds start to kind of slip past each other and jam. You can understand how at a certain point it would be two independent columns of bullets that can't go up the tube. So about 740 is, is kind of as wide as you're going to get. Now, the, the Glock hybrid magazine design never cost them any capacity, even though that effective wall thickness was much thicker than a metal magazine. It never hurt them because the world said, look, for a full-size pistol or a 19-size handgun, that wide of a grip is okay. So they didn't pay a penalty for having this hybrid magazine that has a thicker wall cross-section, okay? However, when they released the 43X and the 48, they wanted a thinner gun. And that was the moment where they actually paid a penalty for this design and created an opportunity for, example, shield arms, or Shadow that uses a, a 40, uh, 43x48 width frame to add capacity to a gun that is the same size or, or smaller. Okay, so 43x48, that's a 10 round gun with a, with a very long grip. It should be a 15 round gun. That's what Shield Arms has told us. If you chop it in half, it should be a 10 or a 13 round gun. That's what Shadow Systems has told us, right, with our designs. So in that case where there was a thin frame, we were able to go to a full width magazine and not pay the penalty in capacity that Glock pays with their hybrid design. All right, so, so that, that's, that's the high level on this. Let's actually go through this though. What, you know, what could someone do to increase capacity? And I'll, I'll, I'll describe this. Okay, so we talked about tube width. And again, just so you know what I'm actually measuring. 
So tube width would be, you know, stick calipers in the bottom of the magazine. If the magazine has a rail design, you have to land on the rails because that's the narrowest point. So if you measure this, this uh, M&P magazine just at the side wall, it's like 785. But if you measure it at the rail, it's down to the standard width, okay? So, so you can mess with tube width, but like I said, only up to a certain point, okay? Only up to a certain point. So, you know, again, DRM or XR, the PMAG overall width is the same as a Glock style hybrid tube. So you're not gonna get any more capacity. Follower design, let's talk about that a little bit. So when the spring is fully compressed, it's down there in the bottom of the magazine like this. If you look at the follower, unless the follower's legs are like longer than the stack of the magazine, really it's the spring, or the stack of the spring rather. Unless the follower's legs are longer than the stacked up spring, then the spring is really what the constraint is there, okay? So you could, in some cases, for those of you who remember the, the Shooting Star magazines, the Chip McCormick follower in the 80s that took a, a 1911 GI magazine length from seven to eight rounds of 45, that was a follower modification, but everybody nowadays knows how to make a follower. So let's just say that all these folks, us included, they pretty much have the most efficient follower you can have. Spring power. Uh, there's some stuff that's happening there. There are some magazines that have more spring power issues. Maybe they recommend replacement of springs on a regular basis and so forth. We tended, especially with the CR920, to go for a very powerful spring. Slide velocities on small guns are fast. You want to have that round come up fast. So you can experiment with spring power, but again, everybody's going to have a spring that's powerful enough to lift the stack up and be reliable over many cycles. So kind of all stays the same there. Uh, the zipper section, so this section here can be done inefficiently. That's where it goes down to one stack, right? Um, everybody's kind of figured out what an efficient zipper looks like. You might get a quarter of a round or something nowadays, but it's not enough to really have a meaningful additional round of capacity. And then length, and that's really what I wanted to emphasize was length is really the only place anybody can go now to add capacity if their tube width is at that 740 kind of range. Right? So people will say, oh, the new Walther PDP, right? 18 rounds. Well, if you take that tube out and you hold it up next to each one of these, you'll also discover it's a little bit longer and the interior width is the same. So it's actually a longer magazine. That's how they get that extra round. Okay? So what does all this mean? Well, it means that if you want to add capacity to a DRMR XR size frame, if you want 17 to be 18 or you want 15 to be 16, you have to go to a longer grip. That's just, that's just the reality of it, unless you were to cheat on the spring or something else. But all this stuff is, again, pretty fixed. You can't go any wider. You're already as wide as you can go. So what could be achieved if Shadow Systems released a metal magazine for the MRDRXR frames? All that you could do was have the same capacity with a narrower grip. Okay, so you could shrink up the width of the frame if you wanted to have a, a gun that was not as wide. Um, however, for a full-size handgun or a full-width grip, everybody's pretty comfortable with that. And if we did shrink the width up, we would lose compatibility with Glock magazines. So the Glock magazine is everywhere. It's in, like I said, it's used in PCCs and all kinds of guns and lots of people have lots of them. So we've made the choice to stick with what is a kind of less efficient overall width of the grip for the DRM or XR, but to have compatibility with Glock style magazines. So that's the question. Would you rather have compatibility with Glock style magazines in the DRM or XR and a 15 or 17 capacity, or would you rather have a thinner grip and have shadow mags only and a 15 and 17 capacity, same capacity? That's the question. Let us know in the comments. This is how magazine design actually works. Everybody's kind of already in the same place, so let us know what you think. We'll see you next Tuesday.